Well, I'm here with a newbie. He's only been here for less than an hour. And I just want you to check him out. He's cute. He's cuddly. He's everything anyone would ever want in a dog. Well, maybe to listen better. That's probably why he's here. So he learns to listen better. Isn't that right? Uh, but what most people don't understand is dogs listen just fine. They can hear. Uh, they know what you're saying. They just don't want to do it necessarily. Now, I had a question come up recently from inside my free group, uh, Ask Jeff the Dog Trainer. And what somebody had asked was, how does hand feeding help with nipping? And first off, I wanted to give you the truth on it. And the truth on it is this. It doesn't necessarily help with hand feeding. It could, uh, or it doesn't help with nipping. Hand feeding could actually make nipping worse, or it can make it a heck of a lot better. It depends how you do it. So first, let's talk about how it could go south, because I can't even believe that came up. But having done this since 2005, sometimes I take for granted some of the stuff that I know, like the back of my hand, uh, or others, it's totally foreign language to them. All right. So uh, someone in the group said, uh, reached out to me and said, you know what, I asked or recommended actually uh, hand feeding in another group and they bashed me. And I'm like, what do you mean? They were like, oh yeah, they told us again and again that, uh, you know, that's not good and it'll make the dogs more nippy. And I was like, interesting because, you know, everyone I work with uses it here for the dogs to learn to not be nippy. And then I got to thinking about it. It made total sense because if you do it wrong, it could absolutely make the dogs more nippy. So let's talk about the truth when it comes to hand feeding. So number one truth about hand feeding is this. If he's being bad and I use the hand feeding to interrupt that, that can lead to a more nippy pup. Why? Because when a dog puts its mouth on us and we're communicating no, either one or two things, well, one or three, either the dog believes that when we're saying no, we're really saying no. Nip me more. Come on, stop. Don't do that nip. Uh, or they could believe we're really actually saying no, and they back down. And the third one is they know we're saying no and don't care because they don't really respect us. And I know that's a tough pill to swallow, so I'll sugarcoat it the best I can, which is not at all because I don't have sugar. So the truth about it is this. If your dog respects you, they shouldn't put their teeth on you unless you asked them to or unless you made that the thing that they're allowed to do. But if they respect you and you tell them no, then it's a no-go, unless they don't want to listen to your word no, just similar to like a child. So when I told my two-year-old earlier no, she knew what I said and did the thing anyway. So we'd have to wonder, well, she's two, Jeff. Maybe she doesn't really know what that word means. Well, she tells me no when she doesn't want something. So I think she kind of understands the meaning slightly, but maybe hasn't figured out that when dad says no, you actually have to stop. So part of it is gaining their trust and then the next part is getting their respect. So the way we get respect is quite simple. Uh, instead of giving them a reward or what they call redirecting, because I don't redirect. Um, I will, I, I take that back. I will redirect if that's the only thing we can do. Like that's like the only, or I don't want to say the only, but like the best thing to do in that scenario, sure. Uh, and this would be for like a dog that is completely Cujo, trying to attack dogs, people, you name it. And it's like, hey, we could redirect you for a little bit and kind of knock some of this craziness off. Because when you try to tell a dog no, you know, again, they could listen or choose not to. Now, when they choose not to listen, if you continue to contradict them, that's when you could get bit. And I just left someone's house today who had actually gotten bit by their own dog. And I won't go into too many details other than uh, it's the first time it happened, and that person did not think it was going to happen. They thought the odds were slim to none. For me, I know this stuff's going to happen because I've been the person bit. I've been the person that, like, thought, oh, they'll never bite. You know, I've made that mistake plenty of times. I learned from it, all right? So because they have teeth, if they don't like what you're doing, if you don't stop, they could bite you. Just like if a human doesn't like what they're what you're doing, they could fight you, shoot you, call the cops. They could bite you if you're Tyson. Sorry, Tyson. That was a low blow. Get it? Boxing joke. Uh, but, you know, they could lash out and do something outside of their character. So what is their character? It's just their default set of personality traits. All right? So all your personality is is who you are mostly, but it's not who you are always. And what do I mean by that? A happy person, unless you've really mastered happiness, could be depressed at times. 
uh, an angry person who's default angry could be not angry at times. And we can go through that spectrum all day. But the idea is this, is you're not going to have um, just like this flat line of motion unless maybe you're dead. Um, so what, what usually happens is our personality is going to shift moment to moment based on our situation, which would mean for someone who's naturally nice and easygoing, uh, when you challenge them, maybe they're not going to be so nice and easygoing, right? But put them outside of that scenario, they're the nicest person in the world. Or you can have someone else that's just generally, uh, I think the right term is um, a jerk maybe, or just a mean person maybe is the right word. And for that kind of person, when you see them be nice, you go, wow, that's weird. I never see this person nice. I wonder what got into him or her. So we tend to think the way we've identified someone is the way they always are when that's not the case. So any dog could bite. It's just some are actually less likely than others. And others are very likely to bite, but nobody knows that because the dog hasn't bitten yet. So they just assume it's fine. Now, when it comes to nipping, it's a completely separate thing, right? But a puppy that nips, when you don't interrupt that, that's what turns into the adult dog that bites. How do I know? Well, I've been doing this since 2005. And the very first dog I took on professionally was a dog that bit uh, everyone in the family. And it was a large family. And when they got the dog from the shelter, uh, the dog was going to be put down at a giant sign on the kennel that said, I bite. So it was scheduled to go down. This family was given it one last attempt, uh, giving this dog a good life. And, um, you know, the way the world worked is it worked out. And what I was able to show them and teach them and how to implement those strategies uh, created in being able to keep that dog and give him an awesome home. Now, for this little bugger here, I don't know this little bugger, and this little bugger doesn't know me. And just like when you meet someone for the first time, maybe you can relate to this, maybe you can't. But for a lot of people, when they meet people for the first time, if you're not super dominant personality type, you might be a hair reserved. I know people like this. And they're a really cool person. They're actually fun. But when they meet new people, they go into a shell. They shut down. They don't show their true personality. Now, as you get to know these people better, they tend to show more and more of their true colors. Maybe you've experienced this with a person you've dated or even a spouse. But dogs, they tend to do that same thing. So he doesn't really know me that well yet. So he might not want to challenge me that much yet. Whereas you have other dogs, it's completely flip-flopped where because they don't know you, they're going to challenge you right away. They want to figure out real quick who's in control and in command. With hand feeding, again, to recap, when the dog is doing something bad and we try to redirect and go, oh, here's some food, that's what makes them more nippy, okay? 100%, they're going to get more nippy. But uh, it works temporarily because they're eating the food from your hand, but their mind is associating when I nip, this person gives me snacks, now, dogs do this, too, with barking at us or whining at us or pawing at us or nudging us or jumping on us. They do that when we're not giving them what? What they want, which is typically attention. So in order to get our dogs to not do that, we have to not give them attention for that stuff. So that's why I call the redirection thing the misconception redirection. But I'll be the first to point out I'll do that. If I have a super tough case and my human's not very uh, capable yet and that dog's super... Uh, incorrigible, uh, then okay, you know, sure. We're going to use some of that food and redirect that first because that's like really all we got, right? Unless you want to just deal with that dog's wrath. Uh, but for puppies, I think that's like a kind of miserable mistake. I believe instead of redirecting, uh, you want to interrupt, disrupt, and disengage. And so what that looks like here comes this little puppy and it's biting me. Oh, I might just pick that puppy up and hold it for a second. Now, if you notice, this guy, he's not in love with being held on his back yet. Well, dude, were you just fronting when mom was here? Is that what it was? Maybe it's because mom was here. Or he's starting to learn not to do that. And what he did is he started throwing a fit and whining and crying and fussing. And I was like, look, because uh, she was just saying, like, you know, he's kind of nippy at night. But he's really good during the day. And I said, well, here's the deal. You want to be in control really all the time, at night, during the day, in the evening, whenever. And control is such a bad word because humans don't want to be uh, under control. We don't want to be controlling of others, right? It's such a negative connotation. But don't you want to control your kids so they don't get in trouble? Absolutely. Until they're a certain age, they can think on their own. Uh, but in the beginning, a kid might do something silly. Like, oh, there's a very vicious dog, and I don't know what that means, so I'm just going to walk right up and let it bite me, which a lot of kids have been bitten because parents weren't paying attention. They're at a pet store. Their kid goes up to pet the dog because they think it's just like the golden that lives at their house, 
and I'm not being a breedist here. I'm just throwing some breeds out there. We could have said Yorkie. We could have swapped out all those out. Um, but what's going to occur? The parents are going to be like, oh, my gosh, kid, what a your dog. And, but no one thinks like, well, you should have just been watching that kid a hair better, which is easy for me to say as I'm not watching my kid right now. I think she's sleeping. Uh, luckily, Dawn's here. And she's not just roaming the house. All right. Uh, <laughs> but the thing is this. With the misconception, redirection, redirection, misconception deal, you just don't want to be rewarding them for being bad. It's really easy to do. So, uh, again, point, point blank, like I was working with someone, and they just got the dog to stop barking, following all my wonderful tactics. They were starting to drop that dog's fear quite a lot. And then, seemingly out of nowhere, the dog lunged toward me, in which that person then gave that dog a treat. Now, I'm going to have to set you down, beautiful, for one second. I believe his name is Max. I might have got that wrong. I hear a lot of names during the day. I'm not saying I'm a name genius. But if your name's not Max, I apologize, dude. But we, me and him just met, like I said. Here, I'll pick him back up because he likes seeing himself. Don't you, buddy? When I went to turn on the camera, he was like climbing up, trying to check it out. So for these little buggers, especially when they're puppies, you want to be careful you're not rewarding bad behavior. And someone else recently was like, you know what? I'm playing these games with my dog, Jeff. And at the end of the games, my dog's just nipping me again. And I said, well, just like a little kid, you can't just try to put them to bed unless they're ready for bed, right? What happens when you try to put your uh, three-year-old or two-year-old down for a nap and they're not necessarily ready? Well, depending on your setup, I know for mine, she might be banging on the door like, let me out. I don't want to go to sleep yet. And so you really want to time it right. And so I said to this person, look, if you would just play that game a little bit longer to that dog wants to disengage with you. I said, you don't need to make the game horrible. Just make it so it's a little bit more challenging. And sure enough, uh, I had seen a message back where, hey, Jeff, you know, dog's laying down in this other room, not nipping me. Uh, great. So that's what we want. But see, what was going on <laughs> is the dog was like, hey, I'm being bad. So she's like, yeah, let's play this game. And then when she's done, the dog's like, well, come on, I'm not done yet. I want to play more of that game. And then the dog's pestering her, nipping her to get her to play again. Now, the way I do hand feeding is this. Why does it work so well to stop nipping? Well, okay. Have you ever tried to do math when someone's just spitting out a random chain of numbers? And you're like, all right, 45 times 60. And the person's like, 88, 97, 105. You know, you're, you're kind of like, dude, stop. I'm trying to concentrate here. And that's what it's like when you feed the puppy at the right time, when they're being good, you put the food in mouth. And now while they're eating, you pet. So this is a healthy way to desensitize versus the way I was talking about earlier, which could be healthy if that's the only thing you got. But again, you know, dogs going nuts. Here, here's some food in front of your nose. Don't do that. You know, we're kind of rewarding that. But at least we're getting the dog some, you know, some trust so that eventually when we go to say, hey, don't do that at all, the dog's not going to turn and then try to bite us for telling them no. That's the whole idea here. Because, you know, right now, maybe the dog's saying, no, Jeff, don't, um, you know, touch my paw a certain way. You know, that little look he gave, right? It was a cute little look. Um, but, you know, a very subtle dude. Come on, what are you doing? Um, versus when I do this, he's not staring at this hand. Or when I'm petting the back, he's not looking at that. But this, he's like, hey, well, what's the deal? So when they give a subtle no, a lot of us don't even know how to interpret it. But, hey, it's something they don't really care about, right? This would be like you having really nice grass okay it's like awesome grass and then here comes someone to step on that grass and you're like get off my grass dude and they're like uh no well, what are you gonna do are you gonna go attack them for that i'd hope not you gonna go call the police well maybe you might i don't know i don't know what you're gonna do but you know it's like a mild transgression but imagine this one you got this super nice lawn and if you don't care about your lawn this will make no sense to you but if you've ever met someone that cared about your lawn maybe it would and, you know, the person goes on in the grass and the dude's like, hey, get off my grass. And instead, this stranger starts digging holes in their grass. That might lead to a little bit more of them stepping out to do something. Again, we don't know what it is. <sighs> so you see what I mean? Like if, if someone would just stop and back off when somebody says no, usually the problem will stop there most of the time. Unless you've made a transgression, of which case there is no repentance for. And they're going to come get you anyway. Because uh, you said something about their mama or whatever you did. I don't know what it was. But same thing for these dogs. And we don't know what it is. It's not always talking about their moms. Maybe it's like, hey, we took their bone. And maybe for them, that's the, hey, hey, you can't say no. You should never do that. And they come discipline you. And this is like, 
you know, an officer pulling someone over for speeding, like, come on, dude, don't do that. Or like, you know, you crash the car and the officer's like, well, dude, you killed someone. You got to go to jail now. Come on. Uh, so there's certain transgressions that uh, repentance is not as accepted. I'm going to switch this dog to this side. I think from carrying a baby two years straight, I don't know what I did to my bicep, but it feels like it's been lifting a lot of weights and it has not. Uh, so that's, it's just so strange. But anyway, switch over here, kiddo. Uh, but what happens is when we give them that food and we're petting them and loving them, it's creating a new association with us and our hands because the one who controls the food is in control. So versus, hey, dog, here's some food out of a bowl. It's yours. That's what can actually, not for everyone, but for the people that have had this, if your dog's uh, food bowl reactive, usually it's because we just fed them, you know, here's the bowl and we just let them have at it and we were under that impression it's a bad idea to pet dogs while they're eating. Well, that's maybe a stranger's dog, but if it's your own dog, certainly you should be able to pet it while it's eating. And if you have children, even more, you should be able to pet it while it's eating. If not, that dog's kind of a danger to your household because if you're not watching, your child goes to pet it while it's eating. What do you think is going to happen? Sorry for being so passionate, but geez. I work with people that are literally crying to me uh, just about each and every week because they didn't understand this stuff and they don't understand why their dog's being so bad. So a lot of what I believe and know in my heart that if we could just empower people on not the way we want dogs to be, but the way they are and accept these truths, then we as a human species will be more humane to the species we've decided to domesticate, right? Right. Because uh, if they had it their way, I don't know if they'd look like this. They might still look like the wolves that we selectively bred for generations after generations to create these cute little things. Uh, but from my understanding, it's pretty much a wolf in sheep's clothes or, sorry, puppy's clothes. Uh, but deep down inside, if you gave them the choice, you know, they'd much rather just, you know, run about their day and do what they did, right? And so that's what they try to do in our house, which is exactly what they would have did in a pack of dogs, which is run around, get into stuff, eat our stuff, uh, nip us, because that's how they were designed to play. Puppies were born to nip. It's just how it is. But if you want to get on the other side of nipping, you got to be like the mama dog when she says, no more feeding. And trust me, what she's not doing is gathering a bunch of food and redirecting and saying, here, quit nipping me. There's food over here. Come on, stop nipping me. No, she's just like, quit milking. I'm done. Uh, stop. And I think it was uh, Scott, matter of fact, um, from our Canine Connect 360 group that had posted a video on a golden retriever um, that was getting milked. And uh, I'm not sure exactly what happened in that video, but I do know there's been other videos, and I'm believing it's a similar one where the mom tells the dogs, no, she's had enough, and the puppies actually listen. It's pretty cool. So the same way a pup would respect its mother isn't because the puppy started off respecting the mother. It's because the mother taught the puppy to respect it. And if the mother does not, which some mothers, if you've ever been around people that are breeders or been a breeder yourself, you'll see some mothers, uh, they don't tell their puppies no. And, like, you kind of have to help the mom. or She's going to get herself into trouble getting milk too much, Right. Kind of got to get the mom out the room or back those puppies off or they'll take advantage of mom if mom's not capable of really claiming that authority. And you have to think the dogs that, you know, bred in the wild were the ones selectively bred by dogs. They decided who uh, did the mating pretty much. And so usually the alpha would find another alpha and they'd mate and, you know, they'd have these pups, but they were pretty good at being in control of those pups, right? But um, as the dogs move down the line, and maybe let's say they weren't an alpha dog, let's say they were like last on the list to be in control, it's tough for that person to be in control. Just like you know people right now that have a tough time standing up for themselves, right? And I'm not saying that has to be a, a default personality forever. Humans are capable of change, as are dogs, or else why would we try to train them? It'd make no sense if that were the truth. So the way we make the puppy less nipping through the hand of feeding is while they're eating, we do the petting. And they start getting this association, wow, when this person touches me, I get to eat. Now, there's a couple caveats to this. And actually, what I should say is <laughs> there's a couple little tidbits that you should know. One is this. If I'm giving that puppy food and I'm petting it, and I'm giving it food and I'm petting it, and I stop and it comes up and nudges me or does something like that, and I give it food and pet it, that could lead to the nipping thing all over again. Because again, the dog's in control saying, give me the food, human. We are putting them in control. And it's cute. But I don't think it's so cute it needs to be in control. Uh, although in the human world, things that are cute, we tend to give control of quite often. This is kind of how our species has operated for a very long time. So the cuter it is, the easier it is to uh, let it take control and get away with stuff. All right. So 
one of our mottos is your beauty is dead to me. And as rough as that sounds, it helps with not having to hear the roof rough or whatever that negative or let's say intolerable or just like, you know, behavior that you want to extinguish to help that go away. You kind of have to really not look at their cuteness because that makes it tough to tell them no or to communicate that at all, even if it's not with the word no, because the lady I was helping today, we were able to get that dog to quit being fearful, quit uh, growling and barking and quit lunging at the end of the leash uh, without saying the word no at all, just with a little leash work and uh, knowing where to properly place her hands on that giant dog she had, 120 pounds, at 10 months old, right? So that could be an even bigger problem. But when they're small like this, it's so easy just to let the, the transgressions go, right? It's like, what is it really hurting? Not much. So when you're petting them and they're not being crazy, then we might play the game some more. And over time, we might start putting a barrier to entry before they actually get what they want, which is, hey, now that you're being good, see this food here? Don't take it yet. Leave it. All right, easy. Now you can take it. And then we do that enough. Now, instead of just hand feeding and petting, we might do something even crazier and, and, and trickier, where when the dog goes to eat the food, and I'm saying leave it, because you know, don't eat it yet. Okay, now go to eat. I might start petting a little bit right before the dog takes the food instead of the original plan, which is feed them, then pet when they're done, you know, stop kind of before they're done so they don't nip you. Eventually, we're getting more adventurous as the dog's starting to get used to this game. And the food's out here. Leave it as I'm petting. And then I'm letting them eat. And then eventually, I'm just petting them first, then pulling food from my pocket. And eventually, I'm just petting them, right? It's kind of like the progression of how this can work. And that's why hand feeding can be so powerful. And then again, we're avoiding the bull guarding or like the bull aggression. So the food's coming from us. It's awesome. We're going to give it to you. You know, you don't have to bite us for it when we say leave it do, but when we tell you to take it do. And, and this helps them understand exactly what we expect of them. Because oftentimes dogs are bad because they think they're supposed to be. And that was the case in point today. That dog had no idea what that family really wanted until we communicated in a language that dog really understood. And this would be like trying to speak French to a German speaking person only. They might grasp some concepts and words based on your angry face or your happy face or how you're gesturing. Uh, but until you really connect on what words mean what, it's going to be tough. And so for dogs, even without words, we just want to show them what the expectations are. Ain't that right, Max? Sure is. So I'm just going to glance on over here, um, just did a little comment section, and there's Scott. How you doing, Scott? Kate said, uh, this is a great video. Well, thank you, Katie. Kate, I appreciate that a whole ton. And uh, hello, Jeffrey Miller. How are you doing? Hello, Brian. Yep, I am the firecracker, Carrie Katie Perry, that's right. Um, <laughs> and Scott was saying, you know, mother basically corrected once, and then the puppies totally respected the correction. Well, Scott, you know, I had a feeling that might have been that video I watched, my man. But I'll be honest, sometimes uh, I don't watch them right away. I watch them a little bit later when I can find a good time. Dude, you're not supposed to fall asleep. Come on, wake up. Wake up. You can't fall asleep yet. We're in church camp, man. You can't go to bed yet. This is where you got to learn not to sin. You got to pray a lot. So I always joke with people and tell them it's like, you know, taking the kid away to church camp and you give him back and then the kid just wants to be a sinner again. So obviously, even when we take the dog to train it for someone like this one, we still need the parents to follow through, follow up, or that kid's just going to take control again when it comes back. Uh, but yeah, in general, ladies and gentlemen, the whole trick to this hand feeding thing without making them more nippy is don't do it when they're being nippy. You know, you want to do it when they're being calm and then progressively be looking for that dog to be more and more calm and then progressively, of course, look to not need the food to be able to pet. Uh, but for most people, they just want to go pet the dog. And you have to think, do dogs go up and pet each other a ton? No. What do puppies usually do with each other? Oh, yeah, nip each other. Yeah, yeah, jump on each other. You got it. Uh, so if you want to create the type of relationship like you see here where they're just like calm and hanging out, uh, do whatever that lady's mom did. Or, you know, again, uh, he wasn't too thrilled with the on the back thing. There's another great exercise you can do to help chill them out. So when what he, what he was doing earlier, it was like throwing a tantrum. He's like, put me down. And I just didn't. And then he was like, wow, that's weird. And they threw that other tantrum. He's like, put me down. And I didn't. And then I was like, all right, he's being cool. I'll set him down. And then he didn't, you know, try to come jumping or doing anything weird again after that. Uh, because he had asked, dude, will you put me down? And I didn't really listen. And then when I decided to put him down, I did. So, of course, why would he transgress again? That didn't work out well. But for puppies, when their transgressions work out, which is, hey, let me go nip and jump. And, oh, you're hand feeding me. Well, that worked. Well, I'm so bored. Let me go bite your couch. Oh, a toy. Well, maybe I should just keep doing that stuff. Uh, so I can totally understand why uh, those people were negative to my group member saying, hey, you know, don't, don't recommend that. It's going to get people more nipped. 
Well, yeah, it probably could. But if you do it right, you know, there's a right and wrong way to do just about everything. Uh, if you do it right, except for a Reese's, there's no wrong way to eat a Reese's. But if you do it right, uh, it's definitely going to lead to what you desire. Okay, You will acquire what you desire if you just take the right steps to get there, ladies and gentlemen. So anyhow, I uh, just wanted to pop in, say hello, had a second, and uh, Max is saying bye. And if anyone has any questions, you know, feel free to reach out and ask. I'm happy to help. And uh, this dog thing doesn't have to be a mystery. At least it's not to me. And if you want me to help you undemystify it, that was probably wrong. If you want me to help you demystify it, right? Unmystify? That's not a real word. Uh, <laughs> can totally help you. And Scott, um, he was referencing M&Ms, which is uh, one of me and Scott's favorite yummies. Uh, geez, those things are good. And uh, we often joke, and you got to find the right motivation for the dog. And, uh, you know, if you give us some M&Ms, you might be surprised what we just might do. In fact, there was a whole commercial about that, too. What would you do for a Klondike bar? And, like, you want to find your dog's Klondike bar. You really do. Whether that's pets, cuddles, whether it's the toys, whether it's the bones, whether it's these really cute ones that even have writing on them. But whatever it is, you want to find that thing that makes your dog tick, that they want. Because, see, humans don't really want to work for this thing called green paper. Uh, is it still green these days? I don't know. But like these little slivers of paper, we don't really want to work for that stuff. We want to work for what the paper gets us. So if your dog simply believes that listening to you leads to what they want, they will gladly listen and you become their currency. But that's what I want to see for people is become the currency. Let your commands be your dog's currency and the motivation and the reason why they should listen. But if you give them everything they want, and then try to get them to listen. It's like a spoiled little kid that has everything it wants. It doesn't want to do chores, then it has everything. And if you threaten to take that stuff away, if they have enough stuff, it really doesn't matter. But if that kid had nothing to start, and you're like, hey, you do some chores, I get you something cool. I'm not saying you should parent your kids this way. This is just an example. Uh, but then what happens is the kid is eager beaver to get a chore because they've associated doing the chore equals something that they want. Food for thought. All right, kiddos, have a great day rest of the day, and maybe I'll even tune in and get to see you later tonight. All right. Uh, so long for now, Max. Tell them bye. And, uh, you know, just remember, the fastest way to change your dog's behavior is to change your own behavior.